And I invite Violet to unmute and um, welcome us into this space. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you here on this in this Black History Month and Super Sunday. Um, we want to be sure all of you know you're welcome. And if you have friends, we want them to know they're welcome. So I want to read you the opening paragraph of our welcome statement. Community of Christ Church is an open and affirming Christian community who lives in God's love and grace. We strive to welcome and include all people because we believe God loves and welcomes all people. And we commit to work for racial justice in our church and our world, regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, political stance or theological perspective, or anything else that might divide us, you are welcome here. Let us have an opening prayer. We invite your presence today, O oh God, we come to you, our God and creator, as children, as those growing to maturity in whom you are at work. Through your word and spirit to make us servants of Christ and vessels for your service, created for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Violet. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are going to uh, continue worship with the hearing of God's word and scripture from John's gospel. And um, this is another one of Jesus' signs and then um, an opportunity to hear Jesus um, interpret that sign for, uh, for us. And we'll spend some time thinking about that. So I'm going to share my screen. as I read from the Gospel of John, from the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, for the food that endures, for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Jesus said to him, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. 
everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jewish leaders then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. This is God's good news for us today. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our friend and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. This is a, a, a strange story. First, a miraculous story of the crowd being fed um, by what seems to be not enough, a, a, a perception of scarcity becomes a vision of abundance as these barley loaves and these fish become enough to feed all the people. But then afterwards, people having seen the sign, having been fed by the loaves, pursue Jesus, believing that he must become king. And he sits down with them to try to explain what is going on here. And I have to say, the way John writes, it, it isn't, uh, there's a lot of repetition, it isn't crystal clear, and there's a lot of metaphorical language. But at the end of the day, Jesus offers himself as the bread of life, that through him we receive all that we need to live. And so the question comes, how do we as followers of Jesus, as the body of Christ, as the Apostle Paul puts it, offer the bread of life to one another and to our neighbors. What does it mean to offer the bread of life? Is it enough simply to say Jesus loves you and Jesus is the bread that has come down from heaven? Is that enough? Or might we begin by asking ourselves and our neighbors what are you hungry for? What are we hungry for today? Besides the bread on our plates and the water in our cups, what are the things that we hunger for? I know for myself during this pandemic time, I have hungered for connection. I have hungered for being in the proximity of others. I've hungered for hugs and handshakes and all of those things that we as, um, as good citizens, as those who wish to love our neighbors well, have refrained from in the interest of curbing the virus. What is it that we hunger for? Many of us hunger for acceptance. We hunger for love. We hunger for forgiveness and reconciliation. I know for myself, I have to be really clear about what it is that I am hungry for. Because sometimes I am hungry for things that will not sustain me. It's like the way that I am hungry sometimes for junk food, for food that gives me an immediate pleasurable response but does not last and does not satisfy. 
I may think, for instance, that I am hungry for raspberry Pop-Tarts. Yes, I said raspberry Pop-Tarts. I'm getting very specific. I may think that they will satisfy my craving and they may for the short term, but what my body is really hungering for is something nutritious. Perhaps what my body really wants is some well roasted Brussels sprouts or some kale salad or something plant-based, a protein that will give me the fuel I need to face the day without also increasing my intake of sugar and unhealthy carbs. Jesus shows up and offers food to the people, food that will satisfy. And Jesus' ministry shows that, the, that feeding real bodies, real bread, is an important part of that ministry. And Jesus also shows that feeding hearts and minds spiritual sustenance, acceptance, forgiveness, justice, peace, compassion, grace, and love are also key to our Christian ministry as the body of Christ. And we can certainly tell people that Jesus loves them and that Jesus is the bread of life. But as John's account of Jesus' story makes clear, we humans need signs. We need to be able to see and touch tangible things. We often need to see what love looks like on the ground, IRL, in real life. We need to reach out and ask one another, what is it that you hunger for? Is it connection? Is it friendship? Is it belonging? Is it hearing the words, you are a beloved child of Christ? You are a beloved child of God. I worry sometimes that the very visible, very loud, very public Christian church is sometimes trying to feed people what they think they hunger for instead of the food that sustains. Perhaps it is easier to appeal to humanity's basest hungers as opposed to the harder work of building relationships, building bridges. This was brought to my attention this uh, the last couple of weeks, and I'm sure it has been on, um, have you all read about it or seen it on the news about truck drivers that have occupied the Canadian capital of Ottawa, protesting mask and, and uh, vaccine mandates for crossing the border into Canada. Um, this also came to my attention, I'm going to Sorry, just one moment here. Here we go. This came up on a friend and colleague's uh, Facebook page, a post from uh, my friend Tyler Connolly, who is a UCC minister. He said, last week, a Christian crowdfunding site called Give, Send, Go became the main funding site for US dollars sent to Canadian truckers demanding their selfishness be celebrated as virtue. Let's be clear, he was preaching selfishness is opposing the gospel. I was intrigued. I wanted to look a little further. So I did some research and discovered that GoFundMe had been a site, a, a crowdsourcing site for giving money to the Freedom Convoy. Uh, but then they posted this, GoFundMe supports peaceful protests, and we believe that this was the intention of the Freedom Convoy fundraiser when it was first created. We now have ev evidence from law enforcement that the previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation with police reports of violence and other unlawful activity. And then immediately following GoFundMe freezing those accounts, $8.7 million is raised by the Christian site, Give, Send, Go. And then I look a little further and clear back in April of last year, this crowdfunding site has been named as a, a source for funding right-wing right -wing extremists, crowdfunding hate in the name 
of Christ. So it is important for us to think about what it means to feed our neighbor, what it means to be fed with the bread of life, and how we do that in a way that brings sustainability and growth and compassion and love into the conversation. So I'm going to close my message with, uh, with a spoken word, uh, a poem, if you will, from a man named Joe Davis uh, called Show Up. As a way for us to think about what it means to live out the, uh, the gospel and to feed our neighbor. For each call to this place, this time and the season, you may not yet know the rhyme or the reason, you may not feel, think, or believe in the same things I believe in, but we've been asked to show up. Show up for wherever you are from, you can come here to be free. Bring your full self, both your head and your heart, your hands and your feet, and anything and everything, infinitely beyond any duality, your sexuality, your gender, your race, your age, your ability, we all have the ability to be. Without you, I'm incomplete. Without you, there is no we. I need you not just to survive, but to thrive, to come fully awake and alive with potential and possibility. Join me at the table, for it is wide and there is lots of food to eat. Show up and be fed feed others, satiating a different kind of hunger, feeling the fire in our bellies. No matter where you've been or what you've done, all will be well when we're all welcome to laugh, cry, dance, write, breathe, and bleed into the margins and follow the call to the farthest reaches of who we are. Whether you run, walk, crawl, even if you fall, we fall in love. Just show up. Show up to answer a call to justice, to transform both the soul and the bodily world the soul inhabits. Show up with all your awkwardness and bad habits. Show up with your doubts and questions. No one here, you can ask them. Show up with your wounds and scars. We all have baggage. And just know that together, we can unpack it. This is no mistake. You are not here by accident. You are the only you there ever has been. You are not the magician, you are the magic. So show up to this place here where there's no grace period, there's only grace, period. Bring your fears and insecurities, let us marvel in the mystery, let us listen each other to life with a deep fullness. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? That's the sound of the genuine within you. The spirit stirring near you, but if you don't show up, how can anyone hear you? Show up. Even if you don't know for certain, you may have the truth and healing for which this world is searching. In this grand universe, we are but small workers but with a big purpose. Because of our hearts widening the circle, hearts that are broken, hearts that are open so a little light can shine through, a little hope for the hopeless. Wherever you go, simply know the spirit of this place goes with you. So go. Ready with sleeves rolled up, always growing, never fully grown up. Ready with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, simply. Show up. Thank y'all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacques Martin says the care of another, even material bodily care, is spiritual in essence. Bread for myself is a material question. Bread for my neighbor is a spiritual one. May we join at the table, for it is wide and there is lots of food to eat. May we show up and be fed and feed others, satiating a different kind of hunger, fueling fire in our bellies. Amen. Our worship continues now with um, 
the opportunity to gather in breakout rooms for conversation and to share the piece with one another. Um, I will have you in there for about 10 minutes. And um, if you prefer to stay in, in the sanctuary, there will be music and images for your prayer and contemplation. And I will bring you back in 10 minutes. So I say to you all, the peace of Christ is with you. And also with you. Amen. I will see you in 10 minutes. Welcome back, everyone. I invite you to take a moment to center yourselves as Violet Thetford leads us in the prayers of God's people. Let us pray. The world of fast money and loud talk and much hype is upon us. We praise huge men whose names will linger only briefly especially on this Super Bowl Sunday. We show up, most of us, for such a circus and such an indulgence, loud, clashing bodies, violence within rules, and money, merchandise, and music. <clears throat> and, and around you gather today, as every day, elsewhere uninvited, but noticed acute, acutely by you, our Lord, those disabled and gone for feeble, those alone and failed, those unlimited, uninvited and shamed. And you whose gift is more than super, overflowing, abundant, adequate and all sufficient. Give us some distance from the noise some reserve about the loud success of the day that we may remember that our life consists not in things we consume, but in the neighbors we embrace. Be our good neighbor that we may practice your neighborly generosity all through our needy neighborhood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers listen now lord to the petitions of your people Lord, please uh, open our eyes to various pieces of legislation that um, can other people that um, devalues them, uh, even in the midst of uh, the rampant capitalism uh, that is the United States. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we trust that you hear our prayers spoken and silently prayed from our hearts. We ask that you might help us as your church to resist the temptation to offer bread that does not satisfy and give us all that we need to do the difficult and sometimes messy and long work. Of belonging, of justice, of reconciliation. May we 
offer you to one another, to our neighbors, and to the world, the bread of life that sustains all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our worship continues now as we give thanks for the generosity of this congregation, as you support the mission and ministry of this congregation. And so we will, um, we have a uh, link in the chat if you choose to access it to give. And during this time, we will hear an offering from our worship team, a song called Hungry, invites you to stay muted and to sing along. I invite you now to find your communion elements and bring them nearby. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord taught. Our Father, our Father who art, who in, art heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy, be name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth, on earth as, it is as it is in heaven. Give us this, this day, day our, our daily bread. bread. And forgive and us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those, those trespasses against, against us. And lead us lead not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us, but from, deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, For is, thine the kingdom, is the kingdom, and the, power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have fed us with the bread of life, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. May it strengthen us, may it nourish us, may it feed the fire in our bellies to reach out and show up for our neighbors, for one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now we have some current events, uh, community news to share with you. I invite uh, Inga to share the screen and Violet to lead us in the news. Um, first up today, we have council. Uh, we had a council meeting this last week and we're going to have Susie tell us about it. Wow, right off the top. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yes, we did meet last week. Um, minutes are available. And as always, you are all um, welcome not only to read the minutes, but to attend the meetings if you would um, like to do that. We always um, enjoy that and enjoy your input. Um, pretty soon you're going to be seeing the request for nominations for church council. So if you've been trying to think of a way to give back and you want to be more involved, that would be a great opportunity. Um, you don't have to be nominated by somebody else. You can nominate yourself if, if you so desire to be part of council. Um, we talked, I don't know, about a lot of a variety of topics. Um, one of them is about in-person and obviously we're all excited that, that we're about to get to do that in a couple of weeks. Um, but also knowing that we are looking for places to do in-person coming April and uh, May and June, um, you know, at some point, hopefully that can be outside, but until then, uh, looking for indoor locations. If you have any suggestions, please do not hesitate to let us know. Um, any and all suggestions are welcome. We're also looking for more opportunities to do service projects. So um, you're going to see some opportunities uh, upcoming with Lent um, and a little project we're going to be working on um, that we hope you'll be excited about. But we're always looking for other service projects. So if you are aware of a group that could use some help, whatever that looks like, can you also please let us know? Um, we want to make sure that everybody knows that, that their input is very valued and 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 we need that, right? We can't, you know, your council isn't gonna try to do all of this on our own. We wanna to look to you to, to let us know what you might be interested in as well. Um, and then just, you know, continue to pray for us that we're discerning as we need to and um, obviously working always in your best interests. And if you ever have questions, you know, holler, let us know. We're all happy to chat with you and have that conversation and, um, you know, maybe a little coffee on the side. That's it, Violet. Thank you, Susie. Today is the final day for our winter needs collection. We have, uh, we did have a pickup or delivery to greater good um, of, of clothing. We're still accepting monetary contributions through the through today. If you go to our website and there's a drop down menu where you can choose greater good and they will be getting a check in for that full amount. Um, probably sometime next week. And if you have any last minute items to drop off, I believe that you can still drop them off today at, um, at the Shepherd of the Valley. It's, this is a joint effort for, uh, for both of us so that we can help more uh, charitable organizations. So please give. <clears throat> next Sunday is our typical third Sunday conversation regarding reconciling in Christ. We skipped the last couple of times because we've had a book meeting, book review meeting on those days. But next Sunday, we're on tap. They've got a wonderful agenda for you. And we'll hope you'll join us at 1045 next Sunday. Well, um, the two Sundays from now, so two weeks from now, we are going to be meeting live all together in real person at Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church on Saturday, Saturday, 
the 26th at 5 p.m. Um, it's a different day, so you'll probably want to make a note of it that it will be Saturday that week. And all systems are go at the moment. The uh, We have gone past the tip on Omicron, and they're letting people uh, loosen up on some of the protocols. We do have a lot of protocols in place for that meeting um, that we have gone through. If if Tom or if you're there, maybe you'd want to go over these protocols for them. Sure. Hi, thank you, Violet. Um, so we, we did go over this last week, so I'll be quick. You no, know, <clears throat> for, for the congregation, when we meet in person, uh, make sure you stay home if you're feeling sick and um, wear a mask, and there'll be a 95 masks available there at the service and um the the church will be set up to be socially distant so um it's not something you need to worry about well that'll be the um sanctuary will be ready for that and just so you feel hope you feel safe coming to uh in-person church you know we're continuing to communicate these safety protocols we'll have the, the masks and the hand sanitizer available the space is well ventilated and and the seating is, is set up and um you know as, as the service today was less than an hour that, that will be the case um on that saturday as well i'd also like to add to that if anyone because it's going to be close to the evening hours if any, anyone would like a ride we have several people that have volunteered to um, pick you up and deliver you to church and bring you back home. Just give um, any of the people on council a call or pastor or Rachel, and we can arrange that. And we're more than happy to do that. We don't want anybody to miss out because of not being able to drive. Violet, is, is there any kind of a sign up for this? For the church or for the driving? For the church. I don't believe so. Chris, we, we've uh, chosen not to do sign up right now because of our numbers. Uh, our, we're, not, we're not worried about having too many numbers and the space is large enough. So, okay. yeah, thank you. I think that's a great question. Yeah. Thank you, Violet. I, I, um, I wanted to just um, remind you that this is Black History Month and we have a variety of opportunities. One coming up today in just a little bit. Um, Cedar Hills United Church of Christ has invited us to join in with their class with Professor Shirley Jackson, taking a look at the impact of individual and institutional racism. And that, um, so the Eventbrite uh, that's in the chat is not for that, but the one before it is, uh, that's the link to get onto that. And that's gonna happen at 1030 today. Um, and uh, so, we in, uh, invite you to, to do that. I'm actually going to be stepping away from the coffee conversation so that I can join that. We've been invited to go in person, but there's no way to get to that church, at least not for me, uh, at by 1030. So uh, I'm going to be uh, doing that by Zoom. But I want to let you know about a couple other opportunities really quickly. Um, uh, Eileen uh, uh, Schultz brought this to our attention. Celebrating Black History Month, Oregon Peace Builders is having a virtual video presentation of the documentary Standing on My Sister's Shoulders. That will be on Wednesday, February 16th, this coming Wednesday at, from 6 to 8 p.m. That is the eventbrite.com uh, in your chat. Uh, you can register for that. It's a free event, but they'd like you to register so you can access that. Um, that will be, uh, I've heard really good things about this video and, um, and so would love to, uh, I'm gonna be checking that out on Wednesday and invite you all to do that as well. And then the third one, I'll just very quickly say, we, we put this in the Faith News, this In My Shoes storytelling project where uh, black male youth uh, take people around their neighborhoods to kind of tell their story of their neighborhood. All the tours are already full. So that's wonderful response. I hope that some of you got in on those. I did not, so I will not be able to do that. They tell us that there will be other opportunities, but I just thought I would still share that because it just shows an outpouring of folks who, who want to learn more about their neighbors and, so, uh, and, and show up for their neighbors in unique ways. So that tour is, is full. That concludes our announcements. Our sending song today is a revisit of the of the poem that you just heard at the end of uh, the message, only set to music. 
and featuring some of uh, old friends of ours, Rachel Kurtz, singer songwriter who wrote and sang uh, Make a Difference. And you all um, maybe remember Agape back in the day, David Shearer, who came and um, performed at our, so, so they are guests on this next video and this will be our sending song, uh, Joe Davis, Show Up. So I'm going to, oh, you know what? Before that though, I have one other thing to show you really quickly. Sorry, I almost forgot this. This is very important. I got some wonderful pictures um, and I wanna share them with you. These are from the fabric sorting event that happened on Saturday. And while I'm showing you these, I'm just gonna read you the wonderful email that Sherry Wade sent out to those who participated. Many hands make light work, a truism that certainly worked today. Thank you for your part in making this simple yet rewarding task a success. Here are the helpers. Eilina initiated the idea when a former work colleague expressed interest in giving away many boxes of fabric no longer needed for his craft project. She and Stuart, along with Larry and Sherry, delivered them to Steve and Beth, who graciously offered their garage, folding tables, and chairs. They even supplied coffee and treats and helped sort, label, and bag. Violet, Rhonda, Cindy, Carlene, and Sherry sorted fabric by size and suitability for quilts, baby blankets, and fabric kits. Violet took boxes of fabric to use for future projects, while others will be shared with church quilting groups at St. Matthew, Emmanuel, and Trinity Lutheran. There is fabric in abundance for any and all who want to make baby blankets, quilts, or other fabric projects. So that thank you all uh, for showing up uh, to that wonderful event. And um, now we're gonna close with this song from Joe Davis with guests. We're here, baby. Our ancestors wild as dreams. We were each called to this place, this time and this season. You may not yet know the rhyme or the reason. You may not feel, think, or believe in the same things I believe in. But we've been asked to show up. Show up from wherever you are from. You can come here to be free. Bring your full self, both your head and your heart. Your hands and your feet and anything and everything infinitely beyond any duality, your sexuality, gender, race, age, or ability, we all have the ability to be. Without you, I'm incomplete. Without you, there is no we. I need you not just to survive, but to thrive, to come fully awake and alive with potential and possibility. I need you to show up. Maybe hurting or afraid. Show up, we'll gather healing on the way. Show up, we will be strong, we will be brave. Show up, dream of the world we will create. Show up, join me at the table, for it is wide and there is lots of food to eat. So show up and be fed and feed others satiating a different kind of hunger, fueling the fire in our bellies. No matter what journey you're on, no matter where you've been or what you've done, all will be well because we're all welcome. You're invited to respond and enjoy a song or a contemplative nod to laugh, cry, dance, write, breathe, and bleed into the margins and follow the call to the farthest reaches of who we are. Whether you run, walk, crawl, even if you fall, we fall in love. Just show up. Maybe hurting or afraid. Show up. We'll gather healing on the way. Show up. We will be strong. We will be brave. Show up. Dream of the world we will create. Show up. Show up to answer a prophetic call to justice, to transform both the soul and the Bali world the soul inhabits. Show up with all your awkwardness and bad habits. Show up with your doubts and questions, knowing here you can ask them. Show up with your wounds and scars. We all have baggage, but just know that together we can unpack it. This is no mistake. You are not here by accident. You are here to share the stories of your sacred passage. You are the only you there ever has been. You are not the magician. You 
or the magic. So show up to this place here where there's no grace period, there's only grace, period. Bring your fears and insecurities, let us marvel in the mystery, let us listen to each other to life for the deep holy listening. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? That is the sound of the genuine within you. The spirit stirring near you, but if you don't show up, how can anyone hear you? Show up, even if you don't know for certain. You may have the truth and healing which this world is searching. In this grand universe, we are but small workers, but with a big purpose. Because of our hearts widening the circle. Hearts that are open, hearts that are broken, so a little light can shine through, a little hope for the hopeless. Came with a swag that was so unique. Swag. Fly the flag and embrace the free. Bring your armpits singing in your ugly feet. You're a piece of the puzzle and the puzzle is peace. It's like that, y'all. That's all. You don't have to act hard. You can just relax, kick back, take the mask off. That costume costs a lot. Don't watch all your thoughts come off the top. Uh. Don't wait till you got it all down. You might dig it like a volleyball fan. Life where you only thought death was. Guess what? You messed up. Think you're extra. Don't diss the disbelief. Don't miss the mystery. Your history's history. Without you, this place is incomplete. Your feet are speaking loudly by bringing you here. Your presence is worth more than a thousand speeches. Your intentions have been made clear. Your mere body is a statement. Your flesh is a hedge of protection. Each moment you spend here is an invaluable investment. Remember, your usual silence is not a good look. Your shrinking violent routine is bringing violence to the scene. So wake up. Partner up, study up, listen up, keep up, read up, look up, don't give up, and most importantly, show up. You may be hurting or afraid, show up, we'll gather healing on the way, show up, we will be strong, we will be brave, show up, dream of the world we will create, show Wherever you go, simply know, the spirit of this place goes with you. So go. Ready with sleeves rolled up, always growing, never fully grown up. Ready with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, simply to show up. All right. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks. Peace, peace to God. Thanks be to God. And I am going to head off in a little bit. Um, Steve, can I make you a host? Yeah, I was thinking about cutting over there after a while, so I'll, I'll join a little bit later. Oh, actually, well, okay, if you're going to join it, then um, is there somebody here who's going to just hang out for coffee and, and not go over to the uh, other conversation? You, you can make me host. Awesome, Michael. Thank you. I am making you the host now. All right. Well, I am going to head out and go check out that class. Wonderful to be with you all this morning and um, look forward to seeing you next week. Can you stop recording before you leave? I will do that too.